What is the name of this co-op? It's called La Co-op Voisin Voisin, which means the neighbor's co-op. Okay, um, where is it? It's in uh, South Central Montreal, what we call the Centre Sud, which is a working class neighborhood uh, very near the downtown part of Montreal uh, on Fulham Street. Um, Fulham's, Fulham used to be the name of the owner of most of the farms around here. When and how did this co-op start? Well, I think at the first, first off it's important to say that uh, at the beginning of the 80s up until maybe 1984-85 there was a series of um, takeovers of squats of different old schools from the school board here that were successful. And uh, this happened in the wake of uh, lowering of the birth, uh, the numbers of births in Quebec, uh, following um, the end of the uh, theocratic rule of the Roman Catholic Church in French Canada. Uh, so um, a certain number of schools became available, and as the school bar didn't want to have the hassle of trying to get us out, uh, a certain number of schools was made available, including this one. Okay, um, when did when did you come into the co-op? I came to, in twi uh, two years after it was founded, about 25 years ago. The co-op is about 27 to 28 years old now. Can you explain um, what is a co-op and how it operates in okay, Canada? A co-op, for example, this one, is, there's 14 families that live in this old school that we've transformed. And uh, a co-op is a form of pr uh, collective pro property, uh, but uh, we are not individually owners of the property. It's the co-op as an entity that is one. So that means that to be a member of the co-op, uh, when uh, an apartment is free, uh, you, uh, you are chosen by uh, a committee uh, of the neighbors of the co-op to, to um, to replace the precedent uh, member, the precedent member, and uh, for that, once you do that, you pay $100, what we call a social share. And when you leave, the only thing you leave with is that $100. But obviously, not many people want to leave, uh, leave this place because it's an excellent quality of uh, housing. Uh, for example, uh, people that work on um, on selling homes, they, they would consider an apartment like this to be worth about my apartment, for example, which is a three and a half with the rooms, uh, would be worth about $1,200 right now on the market. And uh, the most I could pay for that apartment is 450 How much do you pay now? Presently, I pay $150 because I'm only partially employed and the rent is fixed on the percentage of my revenue. Does the co-op receive subsidies from the government? It still does for a short period and that's that's one of the problems we're having now is that uh, all the different contracts with the federal government because this is a federally uh, subsidized co-op that's the Ottawa government there are also almost as many if not more provincially uh, financed uh, co-ops uh, but in the case of the federal co-ops uh, we're at the end of what they call an operating agreement and they, at the end of this operating agreement all forms of funding will fall including the funding uh, that uh, helped out uh, low-income uh, uh, tenants because uh, and this of course is a drama because there are many 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 low-income tenants that often were the founders or have been active in this co-op, like all the others across Canada for many years. For example, in the case of um, one co-op in South Central uh, Toronto, uh, there they tend to be much larger than ours. In this specific case that I met the people about six weeks ago, they have 200, 200 tenants, 200 families. and their uh, operating agreement stops next year and they expect that about 40 of the families will have to leave because they will not be able to pay the rent. Uh, uh, these were founding families of the co-op. 
How much would you expect your rent to be if the subsidies weren't there? Uh, it could be. Uh, it will gradually grow to the, the, the level, of the general market level. Especially in a neighborhood like this, uh, which is affected by gentrification, uh, thus all kinds of uh, taxes and, uh, and uh, other expenses are, are going to rise. And are already rising, actually. Okay, why should the government um, subsidize house, housing? Because right now, when a main crisis of uh, living in capitalism is crisis, is the housing crisis. And if the government doesn't do it, for example, you know, government has different priorities. Like right now, it wants to put uh, $24 billion on defense in Canada. And... Uh, the whole, for example, the whole question of student tuition in Quebec, uh, actually free education up to a university included for everybody would cost $300 million. So we're in a, in, in a place in history or what are we, where we need to decide what kind of a society we want. Do we want an ignorant society, as in the case of the education? Do we want people sleeping in the streets, uh, uh, as, as in the case of the closing of certain co-ops or low-income housing? Or, or do we want a society that take, takes care of its children, of its elderly? Uh, do we want a sick society that continues to privatize health and make the survival a question of who has the capital and who doesn't? Uh, uh, for me, the question in itself, of course, I understand why you, you, you pose it, is a crazy question. Why would we want to retreat from what we have now? Why would we want to be sicker, colder, more ignorant? So I think that's what it's all about. And so the, the fight for the co-ops is, is part of the general, and housing generally, is part of the general fight uh, against uh, the crisis, uh, the austerity measures of the crisis of capitalism, and ultimately, because you pose that question, the question of what kind of a society what we want to live in. And I can talk only for myself, but it's a growing number of, of the people in, uh, in Montreal particularly, that system is not called the capitalist system. Okay, um, how is water paid for in Quebec? Well, uh, tenants, it depends, every city has different bylaws, mm -hmm. but in Montreal there used to be a tax rent, uh, water rent, um, water tax, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, for the tenants. Uh, it was almost the equivalent of one month's rent a year. Many poor families could not pay it, so they would be cut off by the city. Uh, from 1975 uh, to 1987, if my memory serves me right, there was a huge struggle against this water tax because we don't lack water in this part of the continent and uh, you can't, can't really export that much either. So uh, there's no reason for it. Uh, and uh, that long struggle was marked by all kinds of occupations, demonstrations, uh, and of course, people uh, replugging the water when it was cut to a family. And in 1987, the water tax was repealed in Montreal. That doesn't mean in other parts of the province or country that there hasn't been one. Okay. Maybe what I can add here is people ask themselves, well, why is tuition so low in Quebec? And uh, since it's lower than elsewhere, why are people uh, pissed off that the state wants to augment it? Uh, it? The reason it's so low is people have been fighting to keep education accessible here through many strikes. And why is water free? And that's, the answer is the same. The progress right now is resistance to capitalist offensives. Okay. Oh.
Anything else you would like to add about the co-op or share about the co-op? Well, right now the fight back has started against uh, the uh, cuts in the co-op, uh, different co-op programs. There was a first demonstration of about a thousand people in the Point saint uh neighborhood last Saturday. Uh, many co-ops have started uh, making their ba banners. This particular co-op had the, the, the biggest contingent at that demonstration and the struggle is just starting uh, but of course we, we won't be able to win it alone as we can't leave the students alone to do their own strike all sectors of society all sectors of canada all sectors of north america and all sectors of the world have to stand up for a human planet this is the task of our time this is the content of our time in history thank you very much